again. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Oh, no, sir. It's all my fault. Yes, you're probably right. After all, when a woman is permitted to wander about on her own, this sort of thing is bound to happen. Oh, you poor love! What happened? Well, I was in a hansom cab, looking handsome, headed for Regent's Park, when all of a sudden this poor, wretched creature was under my wheels. Are you all right, love? Does it hurt anywhere? It's like a twinge in the collarbone, but I'll be dandy. Dear <clears throat> girl, allow me to ease your discomfort with the acquisition of an invigorating libation. If you say so, sir. Landlord! I ain't the landlord. Then what are you? Barmaid. Then that shall have to suffice. Two glasses of your finest, refreshing, juniper-based beverage, please, landlord. Two gins. That don't taste like no gin I've never had before. Am I to glean from your mass of double negatives that you were enjoying your liquid refreshment? Indeed I am, sir. Thank you, sir. Here, do you mind me asking what's in the bag? Looks right important. Never you mind. It's contents of a rather prosaic nature to the likes of you at least. <laughs> God! Don't you talk fancy. Just look at your fancy clothes. You're making me feel quite the scruff. Young lady, despite your somewhat coarse and limited vernacular, not, not! I find myself enamoured by you. I don't know what any of that means, sir, but I like it. Will you stay and rest a while, love? Sam will be having a tinkle on the old Joanna shortly. He'll be having a what? On the what? I thought tinkle was cock speak for passing water. Are you telling me that I am about to witness a man urinate on an old woman? Is that what passes for entertainment around these parts? Excuse me, mister. Got for time? It is somewhere betwixt breakfast and dinner and I am famished. Very helpful, sir. Thank you, sir. Nice tip for if I may say so. Come again. Nice tip for. Bear cost you a pretty penny. I have absolutely no idea of what you were saying to me. This is not a conducive time for Cockney interaction. I'll have the pheasant! You can have pie and mash! Excellent! Then bring us two of your pies with mash. Whatever mash is. <clears throat> ah, would that this were a more salubrious establishment. So, young lady, tell me something interesting about yourself. Well, I was born in a cemetery. <laughs> yes, I think our definitions of interesting differ vastly. <clears throat> so, how do you enjoy your food? How? Did I enjoy my food? Well, in the usual fashion of placing a morsel in my mouth and masticating until I saw fit to swallow. I see I have offended you. <clears throat> I shall take my leave. <clears throat> oh, I need something. Yes, I must admit he is a fine pianist, although the cut of his jib leaves something to be desired and vocally questionable. Also, I'm not convinced of the last tune. What sort of gibberish is ta ra ra boom di a <laughs> oh. You seem rather intoxicated, dear girl. Tell me, would you be averse to a spot of coitus? I'm begging your pardon, sir, but I ain't right good with fancy words. Amorous Congress, dear. Indulge in horizontal refreshment. Take a turn at Bushy Park. Ruddy sexual intercourse. Oh, indeed I would not mind, sir. But if you've got the readies. Mm. I wasn't aware this would be a fiscal transaction. How tawdry. Never mind, let us procrastinate, not admit it more. Would you care to take my arm? Indeed I would, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Oh. <sighs>
Here. Don't forget your bag, sir. So how was your pie and mash, sir? It was somewhat bland. A little gentleman's relish would not have gone amiss. You say so, sir? Mm-hmm. Pardon, but I don't even know your name. I mean, not that it matters. Yes, it matters not, but if you must insist, there are some who call me Jack. Well, my name's Catherine, sir. Well, it's nice to know with whom I, I'm having the pleasure. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I appear to have arrived previously. What? Oh! Oh, I see. There's your gentleman's relish, eh, sir? Look, not to worry. Perhaps you've got something in that bag of yours what could mop it up. Oh, my God! And your name's Jack? Oh, I know who you are. You're it, ain't you? Oh, heaven's above! Help! 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 Is it? Is it? What's going on here, my love? Oh, that man down there in the shadows. It's Jack the Dripper. No. What? Really? The Jack the Dripper? No, no, no. This confounded creature has taken a blow to the head. She means I am Jack the Ripper. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, he's Jack the Dripper. Oh, yeah. I've heard the girls talk about him. Always finishes before he starts. Yeah. Molly said she got it all in her M line, she did. I am not Jack the Dripper, I am Jack the Ripper. God damn it, heinous defiler and butcher of women. Men will say anything. Be about your business, Strumpet, and damn you for saying so. <laughs> These are wrong, and if you ask me. Then why have I this bag of doctor's instruments clearly intended for wickedness? What bag? Curses! Well, look, I've seen inside his bag, full of tissues and handkerchiefs, it were. Dozens of them. Oi, this one reckons he's Jack the Ripper. Does he now? But he ain't. He's Jack the Dripper. I am not Jack the Dripper. I am Jack the Ripper, and my intentions are evil and malevolent in nature. I'd leave it there if I were you, sir. Ladies, you should not go around accusing a man of arriving early, a most wretched of deeds. If he says that he is the bastard butcher of women, then you should take him at his word and leave him be. Anyway, everybody knows the Ripper's a Polish bloke. Damn your eyes, sir! I'll not have that kind of talk. The Ripper's an Englishman, and don't you forget it. I heard he's an American. Oh, damnation! This anti-patriotic rhetoric is getting my dander up. Mr. Copper, sir, a woman's been done for round the corner. It's all up the walls. It's the Dripper. Oh, my God! That's Molly's patch! Well, this has all been a bit of a rum do. Apologies for trapping you under the wheels of my cab earlier. I don't know what the driver was thinking. Perhaps he thought you merely a pile of dusty old rags. I expect so, sir. Not to worry, sir. Here, I am sorry for calling you the dripper. It is forgotten. Got your bag back, mister. Rent you owe me a sov. I owe you nothing but a clip round the ear, boy. You'll not see penny one from me. Now give it here. It has very important contents. Your tissues, sir. They're not my tissues. God, God woman, they're for my nasal drip. It's the doctor's instruments you need, is it then, sir? Oh, questions, questions, questions. Be off with you, raggedy orphan child. I ain't no orphan. I care not. Well, I suppose I take my leave. I have to prepare to visit my cousin in Yorkshire tomorrow. Yorkshire? Fancy. Oh, don't you just live the life? I don't suppose. I mean, would you care for another attempt up the alley? I don't do up the alley, sir. No, no, I was referring to... Never mind, it matters not. Then perhaps you would care to accompany me to the theatre? I read earlier in the Daily Glum that the new Robert Browning play is a must-see. 
Its contents are of a somewhat profane and salacious manner. I beg your pardon, sir, but... Eh? It's got swearing and root bits. Mm. Ooh, well, let's go see that then. Then let us not be dilatory. Would you care to take my arm? Oh, indeed I would, sir. I'll just get my back. Cassas! Is this the man? Oh, for pity's sake. Oh, no, it was American. The dribble was definitely American. Justice <laughs> prevails at last. I assume we are done here, officer. Yes, sir. Right, come on, Molly, it's time you should get tucked up in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Polish, I could just about tolerate. But American, dear me, what nonsense. I must go back and retrieve my bag. I shan't be a moment. <clears throat> You're on good, kid. Thanks, mister. You're on good, kid. 